Today's historic agreement is yet another piece of good economic news showing something I've always believed. Worker power. Worker power is critical to building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up. President Biden says he was glad to hear the UAW and GM have hammered out a tentative agreement. It is the final agreement between the UAW and the big three automakers. The deal itself is similar to the one that the union reached with Ford and Stellantis, but members say that the devil is in the details. CBS News Detroit's Andres Gutierrez has reaction now from GM's distribution center in Pontiac. This afternoon, the workers that were out here picketing packed it up and went home. They're now awaiting instructions on when to return to work. The deal that they brokered, very similar to Stellantis and Ford, but members told me that the devil is in the details. Everybody wants to know what Sean negotiated from Mary. Was it tricks or treats? Judith Rice and her coworkers are delighted they'll soon be heading back to work after spending more than a month making history by demanding a record contract. I think considering what we've gotten in the previous contract in 2019. This is amazing. The terms of GM's tentative agreement are similar to that of Ford and Stellantis, which includes a 25% pay raise and the restoration of the cost of living adjustment, putting the total pay hike at over 30%. So some workers will make over $42 an hour. GM will also give retirees and surviving spouses $2,500 broken up in five payments. To be honest, uh not service enough because of inflation rates and you know who knows when things will turn around with inflation and but for, for the most part, it's, it's doing justice, yeah. GM gave a big concession at the beginning of the month by putting EV battery plant workers under the union's master agreement. Those jobs were critical for us. It was like a slap in the face when GM wasn't going to allow us to organize those plants. So having that in writing in the contract, bingo. He got it. That move initially spared the automaker a strike at its assembly plant in Arlington, Texas. But without major progress at the bargaining table, the union took it offline last Tuesday. After negotiating into the wee hours of Friday, it seemed they were close to a deal, but teams hit a standstill. And so on Saturday, the union applied additional pressure, calling on almost 4,000 members to walk off the job at the assembly plant in Spring Hill, Tennessee. In order to avoid losing another $200 million this week, GM brokered a deal on what turned out to be Sean Fain's 55th birthday. Until I kind of see what the details are, I'm a little cautious, but I'm excited to hear that they reached an agreement. It's about time. Uh, it's been a long six weeks or so, and uh, I'm getting ready to get back to work and support my family. And so like Ford and Stellantis, the UAW National GM Council will have to approve the tentative agreement before it gets sent to the wider membership. There'll then be informational sessions before a final vote is cast. Reporting in Pontiac, Andres Gutierrez, CBS News, Detroit. Andres, thanks. And on CBS News Detroit today at noon, Rochelle Graham talked with auto expert Paul Eisenstein, who says that this could have an impact on foreign automakers as well. One of the real questions is what happens with the transplants, the foreign owned factories around North America, particularly in the United States. And they're going to feel a lot of pressure right now to raise the rates that their workers get, even though they're non-union. You can see the full interview with Paul on CBSNewsDetroit.com streaming now. Also, while you're there, you can also check out our webpage dedicated to every story that we've been covering since the UAW strike began back in September.